We're going live, live, live. We're going live, live. We're going live. Hey, we're live, everybody. How you doing? What do you think of this? Traveling with Bruce is on the air. Welcome to the show. Got one of my new t-shirts on here today. How about that? The red bubble uh, shipment arrived. Safe and sound in good old Creston, British Columbia. Little tiny town of 5,000 people in the interior of British Columbia. Uh, <laughs> tracking number and everything. It just, they, I got an email this morning in my phone. It just popped in there, said, your, your t-shirts have been delivered. I'm going, delivered? There's no knock on the door here. Well, I don't have at-home mail delivery. It's just a block or so away here, uh, kind of for the whole community in this area of town. So uh, popped over there, and sure enough, there was a package waiting for me, and I made a video of it today. You guys can check it out. The unveiling, the unboxing, the unpackaging of Red Bubble T-shirts for traveling with Bruce. I ordered double extra large T-shirts, as you can tell. Look how baggy this is. I love them nice and loose like this. Because I find that when I like to wear T-shirts uh, on a cruise or in Palm Desert, I, I like them loose. I don't like a tight-fitting shirt because it's hot and could be muggy, could be very warm. Anyway, I just love this. And I know that after a wash or two, even though you're supposed to wash with cold water, and I will, uh, you know, there's going to be just, you know, a little more shrinkage, I'm sure. But still, very happy with the look of the shirts. I'm very pleased they came in, like I say, very quickly. I have here the others. Uh, Here's another one that I brought in, uh, the white one in the, in the Wave logo. That's kind of nice. And then let's see here. Uh, here we go. We've got the flag logo right here. Traveling with Bruce, the flag logo shirt in a, in a gray. And then here we've got the uh, circular Traveling with Bruce logo on a green shirt. Nice. And then I've got, uh, this is the St. Thomas, uh, the photo that I took from the top of the uh, of the um, cable car ride and uh, the Explorer of the Seas there, which is the ship Jen and I were on. And uh, the shirts themselves, they're, uh, they're in, in, the, in my case, these are classic t-shirts, nothing fancy as far as material goes. They're made by Gildan. Uh, here in Canada, Gildan, uh, they're known for good quality product, uh, very heavy, a very heavy uh, shirt. It's got a, an extra ring here uh, of a reinforcement. Same along with seams here on the seat. Very nice. Uh, these are great shirts. When I was in the sports biz, doing my uh, doing my sports uh, logos and and that type of thing, we would offer uh, uh, t-shirts for sale, of course, from all the various sports teams. And it was not uncommon for uh, National Hockey League shirts to arrive at our store with this brand of shirt, a very good quality. And uh, these shirts would retail for, you know, 25, 30 bucks a piece with NHL logos or whatever logos on them. But uh, very happy. Um, the only thing is that the camera here uh, on my on my uh, computer, <laughs> it's more for a headshot uh, so that you see me talking to you. It's not designed for my uh, my merch. If I actually you know, did this, you just see the shirt all the time. And then, I, you know, you just see my chin wagging away here. That might actually be a better look for the channel more than I think about it because, you know, I wouldn't put you guys off with the ugly face that I have. But that way you could just, you know, see my hands and my gestures. And <laughs> I could show off the shirt all the time and, you know, not show off me. But anyway, I'm having too much fun here today. Uh, I'm just glad that they're here. I got, I've got to order some more because I, I keep coming up with new logos. Uh, I've got one of my viewers helping me with the logo design, and they're just coming fast and furious. I think we've added, oh, gosh, there's got to be six new logos since these came out, and this was the newest logo when I ordered it. So I can't keep up with my own merch. <laughs> and just so you know, folks, um, today I got an email from Redbubble uh, saying uh, everything, uh, all coffee mugs, travel mugs and all um what do they call it home decoration so that means the tote bags the pillows scarves uh uh telephones uh you know whatchamacallit all 25 percent off uh so if you go to my store today and order some merchandise uh to help out my channel uh you're getting 25 percent off the cost of all the everything but the clothing basically so because every couple of days they bring out a little special and uh if you go to redbubble and keep an eye on me uh keep an eye on my uh on my uh channel there uh on my store you'll find uh 
you know, you'll find occasional deals. And today it's 25% off coffee mugs, travel mugs, cell phone holders, and uh, all kinds of other merch. So check it out if you can. And uh, yeah, occasional deals. you know, it's 25% off coffee mugs, travel mugs. I was just saying that 25%. I was just, I was just saying that Bruce. Anyway, there you go. So fantastic. Anyway, thanks for all of you guys uh, supporting me today on the store's uh, success. Um, I'm hearing good reviews from everybody on, on their merchandise. I'm really happy about that, of course. And now I've got my own tees. I can start wearing them on the air and doing my videos. So I'm excited about that. The channel, um, yesterday I was at 2,030 subscriptions. We were just, what, three days ago, we hit 2,000 subs. Uh, right now, 2,048. We've got 48 more subs in two and a half days. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I did get a shout out from the good folks uh, at La Lida Loca. Uh, they uh, they were doing their live telecast the other night, and I popped over and said hi because they've been here to say hi occasionally. And I just say, hey, how are you guys doing? What's going on? And uh, they immediately put a shout out uh, to their viewers about, hey, you should check Bruce out on uh, traveling with Bruce. Uh, I got, I, I think I got some other subscribers that are watching me as well. So isn't that fantastic? Uh, strength in numbers, I love it. And I welcome uh, any creator uh, who's out there wants to say hi to me, please uh, say hi on air. I'm happy to give you a shout out, not a problem. I'd love that. Just reciprocate your way, uh, that'd be great. Um, I love to, uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to get, um, uh, to do some interaction. And I'm kind of thinking that I'm, what I'm, I wanna try is if I can get a guest on my show that'll be on the telephone, I'll be talking to them live, like I'm talking to myself here. Um, and then I can just read questions and comments from you guys for the guest. And that might be one, you know, cheap way to do it. Uh, it's like a Larry King, you know, on the phone from PA, we have, you know, something like that. Uh, I don't have an 800 number or anything like that yet. I'm still trying to figure out some setups here. I know on the software front, I can set up uh, a scenario where you see me, uh, sort of over here on this side of the screen. And then over here, there'll be another person live on the screen who's a guest of mine. And then they'll be in the middle of the, the dialogue that we're sharing. And I haven't figured that software out yet because uh, I'm old <laughs> and I'm inti intimidated by it. Uh, I just, it, when it says, do this, do that, do this, then do that, then click here and then go to settings and properties. And I, I just go, ha, ah, I lose it. Um, it's kind of like too much ice cream, you know, on an ice cream cone, you'll try to eat an ice cream cone too fast and you get the brain freeze. I get the software freeze and it's, it's just over. <laughs> so you just, you just one click, you know, it works, but I go old school. I'm thinking, well, just do what Larry King did. He, he just had, you know, me as a host and you get people on the phone, you know, I'll just try to handle it that way, but I'm a one man crew. So who knows? We'll see what we can do. Anyway, I'll, I'm working on it. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed today, but Jim Zim did a video today on the uh, the Bliss. He's in uh, he's in um, he's in Puerto Vallarta now. He's in Mazatlan, Mazatlan, Mexico. He released a video about the uh, about the uh, Haven, the Haven Club, and he walked around the Haven with his camera and he was doing a voiceover. And uh, uh, all everybody on the ship is you know, gone. They're all in Mazatlan. Uh, there, so there's only like a handful of people there, so perfect time to film it. And it uh, looks really nice. It, it looks really nice. Uh, I'm sure a number of you folks who are thinking of booking the, the Haven, you're going to like it. Um, so that looked pretty good. So I, I saw that video today, so I recommend you check that one out. I'd love to get Jim Zim on my show, uh, even on a telephone call where we just I can just talk to him on the phone. You'll hear his voice, and then we can ask him questions. I'll ask him questions. You guys ask questions. I'll read them to him, and uh, that'd be great. You know, if, he, if he doesn't want to be on the, on the air live, that's cool. Just be on the phone. And then it'll be like a phone call. It'll be great. Anyway, uh, he's on his he's on his trip right now. So uh gotta wait for Jim to get home. And he's got video when he gets home. Oh, has he got video about the bliss? He'll be releasing videos like crazy for weeks, which is my future. <laughs> I'll be doing that too. Uh so we'll see how that works out. Um, got some news today about hurricane season. Uh that starts next week. So I've got some information there. And um, another thing I was going to mention, um, the Vision of the Seas. That's the Royal Caribbean ship that I talked about was it yesterday. That's the ship that lost power uh, in the Mediterranean um, night before last, perhaps. Um, it was dead in the water for about 10 minutes, and they had to reboot their entire electronics and mechanicals and get everything up and running again. And they worked their way into Santorini, Greece at about seven knots an hour. Um, and then they worked their way to Malta. That's where they were today. 
Uh, this is five o'clock Eastern time. It's now about 11 midnight ish in Mediterranean. So they've already left uh, uh, Malta and are headed now for Barcelona. Um, I've heard nothing uh, uh, about any kind of delays for this, the next cruise that they're on once they get to Barcelona. They'll be at, de they'll be at sea tomorrow for a whole sea day tomorrow. Then Barcelona the next morning. Excuse me. So that should be um, what's today. Th this is now coming into Friday. It's Thursday here. Friday is a sea day. Saturday they get to Barcelona. And then they're supposed to leave Barcelona that, that evening on their next cruise. Haven't heard about a delay. Uh, nothing like that. So everything seems to be uh, moving forward. Uh, so perhaps the, the issue is nothing, nothing serious. Uh, let's hope so. Um, we'll see how that uh, kind of works out. But I did see an article, a little news article today about Malta, uh, <clears throat> how the, 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 uh, Valletta, uh, that area, they want to be, uh, come much busier than they are now. Uh, right now Malta handles, I think it's 700,000, uh, uh, cruise passengers a year. Um, and there are a few ships where you can board a cruise from Malta that use Malta as sort of a home port. Um, um, kind of uh, interesting to watch how Malta will uh, go forward. I think they want to increase their business dramatically uh, and entice more cruise lines to come on by for a visit and or try to get some ships to home port out of Valletta. Uh, we'll be interesting to see how this uh, sort of plays itself out. I know that, um, that uh, uh, Lisbon is just celebrating the opening of a brand new uh, terminal uh, for its cruise ship passengers. And um, they're, uh, they're uh, I think they just spent $20 million on a brand new terminal there. So they've got big plans to expand their home porting uh, affairs uh, from Lisbon, Portugal. So this cruise business, it's an expanding business. It's a, um, a moneymaker. Home porting is what it's about. If your city can attract cruise ships to base themselves from your city, jobs and opportunity because you got to feed 4,000 people for a week to 10 to 12 days from your hometown. That's a lot of food and services and supplies to bring to that cruise ship once a week or every 10 days or 12 days, however often these cruise ships come through. If you can get uh, several cruise ships using your port as a home port, uh, that builds up business big time because of course you have people coming into town to get onto the ship you have people leaving town once they get off the ship and of course you as a home port are trying to convince these folks to come a few days early and stay a few days longer and hang out with some of the hotels restaurants bars and sites and spend money so yeah big business and you don't need to build any smokestacks and factories to house these folks it's a clean business uh, get them in, get them out. The cabbies are happy. The airlines are happy. The bus lines are happy. The tour operators are happy. You know, it's it's good stuff. Let's see who's here today. Anyone who's watching for the first time, welcome to my channel. Welcome to my show. Uh, if you've never been here before, we talk about cruise ships, cruise ship vacations. If you haven't figured it out already, that's what I'm talking about, cruise shipping. Uh, we love talking about going on holidays. Uh, say hi to me. Tell me where you're watching me from. What's your high temperature today? I'm in Credits for Creston, British Columbia, Canada three miles north of the Idaho border. Uh, we've had absolutely gorgeous weather this past week, uh, hitting the high in the 80s. Uh, today, I think we're gonna be in the high 70s. We've got a bit of an overcast situation out here, and I heard thunder about 20 minutes ago for the first time, a little rumble. So we might have a little afternoon thunder shower coming through here. Today being Thursday, uh, I'm on the air at five o'clock Eastern, where, which is right now, and I'm on tonight at eight o'clock Eastern for my second show. Tonight, we got trivia. I got some trivia questions for you guys. No cheating, no Googling, one answer at a time. And I'm ready for you guys. We'll have some fun tonight with some Thursday night primetime trivia. Uh, I'll be on tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern and Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern. And I'm taking Sunday off. Uh, so uh, stop on by and say hi and uh, enjoy the show. Today, uh, I'm going to read right now who's here and say hi to those folks that are saying hi to me. Charles Jordan uh, popped in and said... Uh, Good evening, Bruce. It's 82 and partly cloudy here in Iva, South Carolina. Charles, welcome back, pal. Uh, Joseph Hollyfield. Hello, Bruce. It is 75 Fahrenheit and cloudy in Bostic, North Carolina. Welcome back, Joseph, to the show. What do you think of the show? What do you think of my tea? I love these. Uh, Peter Heckema. Hi, Bruce. 91 degrees and beautiful here in Tarpon Springs. Won't last much longer as there's a tropical disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico that should make us lots of rain over the holiday weekend. And you guys don't need any more rain. I think you've had enough lately, but yeah, it's that time of year and these systems are coming through and the hurricane systems are starting up. It's that time of season. 
we got to watch for that. Peter's also saying uh, hurricane season started June 1st, but we usually don't see too much as far as hurricanes till August, as that is the peak of the season. We'll cross our fingers this year. Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Hi, Pamela. Peter Heckema, I want to know why you didn't order T-shirts for Jen. Uh, Jen wanted to find out what the quality of the material was. Uh, so I'm the guinea pig. Um, she wants to see the quality of this. Um, now she kind of knows. Although I think Jen has an idea uh, of probably ordering um, uh, a little higher quality material than what I would wear. I'm just a, just an old guy wearing T-shirts. You know, I'm not anything particular. I'm not finicky, finicky. But I think Jen, being you know the high-end model that she is, you know the, the high-end star, um, you know with millions of uh, hundreds of millions of followers, I'm sure. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta you know, gotta be finicky about that. So we're we're working on it. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Randy Lucas popped in and says, greetings, Bruce and all from Paradise, California, where it is a high of 75 degrees. Congrats, Bruce, on getting your much, much your merch delivered. They, it looks great. Uh, Randy, for a big SRV guy, you know, this is a nice little shirt to wear behind your big SRV steering wheel, don't you think? I love it. Uh, Tracy Dunlop, hi, Bruce and all, 76 Fahrenheit, 91 degrees humidity, so still feels hot, even though overcast and raining off and on today in Naples. So yeah, 76 Fahrenheit. That's easy to take, but 91 degree relative humidity, whoa, that's hot and sticky. That's, that is miserable. Uh, in Ontario, where I grew up as a kid, uh, where we had basements, or even here, you head for the basement in the summertime, certainly in the 60s before we had air conditioning as standard fare, we all headed to the basement during the afternoons to survive it. Uh, Jim Thomas, hey, Bruce, love your shirt. Thanks, Jim. JC Dunlop, t-shirt looks great, Bruce. Thank you, Tracy. Gregory Hartman, he, hey, Bruce. Nice shirt, man. 88 and partly cloudy here in Tampa. Thank you, Gregory. Paul Wilgus. Hey, Bruce and all. 80 and sunny here in Virginia. Love the shirts. Uh, thanks, Paul. Desi Wagner. Hi, Bruce. It's 84 and humid today in Chicagoland. It's getting up there. Saw the unboxing video. Or the unboxing video. The shirts look great. That was fun uh, doing that. Today. I wanted to do that with you guys so you could see what it looked like. Thomas Henry, I have the St. Thomas shirt and dolphin with, uh, with love, Bruce. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I got those. I now have the propeller shirt. I got the mash style shirts. I've got the Anchor TWB shirt. Oh, man, they just keep coming there. It's incredible. I'm, I'm having trouble keeping up. Uh, Gregor Hartman, sorry, I missed last night's show. I was at Game 7, and it was amazing. Go Caps, go. Wow, what a game. The Caps won 6, Game 6, Game 7. Tampa Bay is out. Caps are going to the finals against the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Who would have thought that possible? Unbelievable. It loves to travel. Hi, I was watching your T-shirt video. What do you think about that? What do you think of these shirts? I'm happy, happy, happy. West Morrison High Bruce and 90 here in New Braunfels, Texas. Saw your unveiling video. Very nice. I hope to buy uh, uh, some before my river cruise in November. Right on, sir. That's great, Wes. Uh, Gregory Hartman, keep it rocking, Bruce. Good on you, man. Uh, Dave, 96 and sunny here in Minnesota. Dave, are you new? Dave, I don't recall just a Dave here before. This could be the first time Dave's saying hi to us, if it is. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm glad you're here. If you've been here before and I've forgotten all about you, it's because I'm old. <laughs> glad to have you, buddy. Uh, fantastic. 96 in Minnesota. Whoa, that's the hottest day of the year for you, I think. Wow. Tracy Dunlop, thank you, Bruce, for the info on the last show about Royal Caribbean Mariner of the Seas going out of Miami. Already planned and booked our annual Girls Weekend for September on this ship. Right on. Instead of the usual NCL Sky. Yes, if you're going to be on a three, four day uh, cruise out of uh, out of uh, uh, Miami, w w why go on a uh, on a uh, Norwegian Sun or Sky when you can go on the Mariner of the Seas? It's being re renoed right now, re refurbished. It's a thousand fifty feet. It's huge. It's massive. It's got its own ice skating rink in there. Um, they're reno they're renovating it, refurbishing it to the tune of about a hundred million bucks for a month right now. That ship's going to be fantastic when it's done. And it's a three, four-day uh, deal. Plus, unlike Norwegian Cruise Lines, they're offering their cruises out of Miami, Fort Lauderdale, uh, and, and also Port Canaveral with a mandatory uh, drink deal. It's, it's a, it's a, they're booze cruises. They're, they're offering the booze, uh, you know, all-you-can-drink card as part of the cruise. And it's a mandatory $20 per night tipping charge. No discussion on top of that, by the way. I had, forgot to mention that yesterday. Where with RCCL, with Royal Caribbean, uh, you can book a three, four-day cruise on Mariner of the Seas to the Bahamas, which includes Coco Cay. Um, 
you don't have to buy a drink card as an automatic. You can choose that if you want. You don't have to. It's not forcing you to buy that. Norwegian, it's an automatic add-on. That's why it's 200 something a night for a three, four night cruise. You're talking $800 for a four night cruise on a Norwegian cruise ship that was built in 2000 when you can go on the Mariner of the Seas with way more amenities for certainly a lot less than that. And you choose whether you want to do a drink package or not. I, I think that makes sense. Tracy, thank you for your comment today. That's great. Debbie Manuel, nice shirt. Video looks great on you. Thank you, Debbie. I'm glad you caught that. Uh, I knew you would catch that video. <clears throat> Seeky for high Bruce and all 84 Fahrenheit in the shade here in the, uh, here in the shade. A very damp, slight breeze, still enjoyable. We're expecting a tropical storm this weekend. Not worried. Thumbs up and nice merch. Congrats. What do you think? See, Keeper, isn't this great stuff, man? I got to love these logos. They're just awesome. I'm telling you. It's fantastic. Debbie Manuel, sunshine and 80 so far, I think, in Chico. Gregory Hartman, heavy rain all weekend. Betsy Lane in Hamilton, 29 Celsius in Hamilton. We're getting up to 80 here in Hamilton. Uh, Thomas Henry, 86 in Richmond, Virginia. Getting warmer, people. Nina Frank, hi, Bruce and all. Full summer in Sweden right now, 30 degrees Celsius. Hey, Bruce, nice T-shirt. Thank you, Nina. It's getting hot in Sweden, too. Fantastic. Seakeeper, I, for one, could live with the idea of sailing on the Norwegian uh, Bliss. Yeah, that sounds good. Bring it on, but no haven for me. There you go. And it's raining outside. I hear rain coming down, and yet it's sunny looking outside. We have a thunder shower happening right as we speak. I doubt you'll hear that on this uh, broadcast if you can hear that sound. Unless I get lightning, then you'll know. <laughs> Uh, Seakeeper doesn't need the haven, uh, but he'll be happy being on the list. You betcha. Uh, enjoy all the amenities without paying the top dollar. I hear you. Uh, my friend from Tokyo, Tokyo is here. Uh, X, 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 <laughs> Good morning, Bruce. It'll be 27 today in Tokyo. I managed to catch a live stream at least for a little while before I have to go and leave for work. Welcome to the show. I got your emails or your messages earlier today and uh, welcome back. Tommy Eaton, hello, Bruce, and, 70, uh, and all 79 and partly cloudy in Jacksonville, Florida. Thomas Henry, how about some polos with collars? Would love those. Yeah, I too would love those, but they're not offered through Redbubble. Uh, there may come a time, though, where they might do it. The trick of it is, I think, though, uh, Thomas, is um, <clears throat> excuse me, the costing might be so high that that they might be they might have looked into it and they're just not able to find a decent price on them and the the, the markups. It might take them to a, an astronomical level and then they won't sell on a numerical volume basis. I don't know. We'll have to see, but I, I wouldn't mind having some polos myself. Uh, even if they have like stitched uh, embroidered logos, uh, I'd really like that. But Time will tell. Uh, these are early days. Um, Wendy Thompson. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, nice shirt, Bruce. Sunny, about 85 in Bland, Missouri. Last year, we renewed the passports to get to, um, get to change the address on them soon. Then we can go off on the cruise port once we're, we're moved. Can't wait to. Fantastic, Wendy. Days, your cruising days are coming. See the inside of the cruise ship again. Yes. Joseph Holyfield t-shirts look awesome. Thanks, Joseph. Anina Frank. You can go down one size. I, I know, uh, but I also am waiting for these to be washed and then just see how they do. And with the Costco ice cream I'm eating, you know, it might all equal out, you know, because now I got a little room for a biscuit or two, just like Miss, like, you know, like the steamer. And you know, I got some room for biscuit. We shall see. Uh, <laughs> uh, Seakeeper, the propeller design looks great. I may order myself a paper a paperweight for my desk or, or a coffee mug, you know, uh, not a bad idea. Um, Bob Hollis, 84 and sunny in Atlanta. Richard C., uh, like the T-shirt, Bruce. Uh, John B., hi, Bruce, 74 in Potsdam, New York. Nice ad. Nice and sunny. Uh, all right on John B., nice and sunny. John B. is different from John, who was on earlier. I've got a John, and i got a John B. Uh, welcome to both of you if you're both brand new. Fantastic. Uh, Peter Heckema, Thomas, yes, polo shirts will be great with a small logo. Yeah, something up here, you know, like a little embroidered thing up here would be kind of cool, up there, whichever side. Uh, something to uh, consider. I'm, I'm, I'm always uh, scheming, but right now I'm just trying to get my, get my early day act together and uh, put out as many logos as possible. See what logos are selling, which ones people ignore, and then we'll kind of go from there and just keep working away. What about hats? Uh, you know, it's, it's just no end to it. Just no end to it. Um, love to do fridge magnets. I'd love to do something like um, keychains. Um, there's just, you know, there's a ton of ways to play this. So time will tell. Uh, Joseph Hollyfoot, I have a question. Do you like Disney Cruise or have you ever been on it? Uh, Joseph, I haven't personally been on Disney. However, 
everything I hear, everything I see, all the comments I get here, uh, virtually 100% pure satisfaction about Disney, except for the price. <laughs> They're not cheap, but uh, we're talking five or five and a half star uh, quality line. Uh, great if you're going with children, absolutely. Um, uh, I even read a, um, a, um, an article in the New York Times travel section about a month ago now, uh, and it was a um, an editor, a, tra a travel editor, who went on a, I believe it was a four- or a five-day cruise with his wife and 12-year-old, I think it was 12-year-old child, young, young lady. They had a blast. They loved it. And the thing that he uh, wanted to let everyone in on was just because we were on a Disney cruise, it wasn't just a children's cruise only. There was alone time for mom and dad because the youngster would be participating in all of these events and activities on board the ship that we're going on for youngsters only mom and dad not allowed and so mom and dad would have their uh, their pool time or they'd have sun tanning time or they'd be in their balcony room reading a book on the balcony time or whatever happens in balcony rooms when the kids aren't around whatever that is um, and then they had the um, the restaurants in the evening. Um, they would uh, they would wait for their main supper uh, later, and they would go to a, a nicer restaurant, uh, you know, for mom and dad. And they loved it. They really enjoyed it. But it was pricey. Um, but the the um, writer basically equated the trip as a five star Disney experience. Um, experiencing the Disneyland, Disney World ambiance uh, in a five-star setting, and so thumbs ups there. Um, it's it's a deal. You you can look on vacationstogo.com for the best deal if you want. Try to find a deal. Um, it's hard to come across a bargain deal on on Disney. There just there just aren't any. They're at 102 to 104 percent average capacity per cruise ship. They they sell out uh, all the time. I know that last year. During hurricane season, I think Disney had to cancel cruises, uh, new new cruises, for almost set five or six days, almost a week, and that caused all all kinds of heartache. Uh, there were all kinds of adults and children who, you know, thousands of them who now couldn't go on a cruise because the cruise was canceled. And then those, of course, who were on the cruise, <laughs> they were on these ships. They got to go a little. They got to stay on the ships a little longer because the ship couldn't come back to port because of the weather. Uh, so some winners, some losers, but um, um, yeah, they're uh, busy now. They've got four ships going right now. They've got th they got three or four on order uh, coming uh, starting 2020, 21, 22, 23, one a year. Uh, each ship at full capacity, four thousand passengers per ship on order, being built one right after the other after the other. So yeah, Disney will be expanding dramatically. They'll be going much more global. They will not only be out of Florida. Uh, they'll be out of LA. Probably they'll have a ship permanently out of Los Angeles because there's Disneyland over there, and you got 30 million Californians. Uh, you got a ton of options there. Uh, they're probably going to uh, base a ship out of the Orient, maybe out of uh, Shanghai, maybe out of Hong Kong, maybe out of uh, somewhere you know somewhere along the coast, uh, somewhere in Asia, and then uh, there's Europe. The European market. I think they'd like to have a ship out of Europe as well, because Euro Disney, and you know, so they're going, they're going out. I don't think they're going to stop at seven ships. <laughs> I think they're going to go to like fifteen eventually. But yeah, highly recommend them if you get the chance to go. Uh, um, uh, Mr. X from uh, Tokyo, uh, Joseph. I've been on several with and without small children in our party. It is really enjoyable. They have a lot to do for everyone. Everyone, you you can you can definitely enjoy yourself. That's a good comment. Sea Keeper, a collared shirt with an embroidered pocket would be awesome. Right on, Sea Keeper. We're on the same page here. Uh, uh, Sylvia is here. Hi, Bruce. Nice shirt. Uh, Sylvia, Greensboro, North Carolina. The fellow who fell, jumped from the carnival ship, was from Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah, unfortunately, I think he was fifty years fifty years old. Eighty five and sunny right now over there. Um, they gave up the search, uh, Coast Guard, then the ship, uh, the ship went, I don't know how many hours, but the Coast Guard went 24, and no sign of this individual. Peter Heckema, uh, Joseph, uh, Disney is wonderful, first class, but you have to be, you have to like to be with a lot of kids, but they do have sections just for adults, right there, right there. Uh, Mr. X in Tokyo says, go off to areas without children allowed, but all the staff 
they're really good. Yes, they are. And the staff love their jobs. I think uh, very happy folks on board Disney uh, from what I'm, from what I gather. Uh, these comments just verify what I was kind of speculating on. Richard C. Bruce, any thoughts on Virgin Cruise Lines and the new ships they are building? Yes, I have thoughts. Um, I have interesting thoughts or I have thoughts. <laughs> I don't know if they're interesting, but there's not. Adult-only cruise um, line is what they want to go with. I get it. Um, I think they want to go 18 and over, maybe 25 and over, but they, they definitely want to go, you know, let's say age of majority and over uh, is their thought process. The ships are, I think, 24, 2500 capacity. Um so they're not like mega, they're not like the mega, mega cruise ships. They're going to be sort of like Hall of America size, princess size, um, that kind of thing. Um, I've seen a lot of imagery. Uh, I've seen a lot of renderings, computer renderings of the ship so far, what they're doing, what they're teasing. They want to be, I think, a, a cruise line that is going to offer a lot of uh, activities. Uh, uh, this is going to be an action-packed kind of a cruise, uh, though they will have secluded adult areas. Oh, well, adult areas, secluded areas where you can, you know, it'll be quieter and you can unwind and not participate in daily activities. It's not like they're going to have a uh, uh, belly flop contest in every pool on the ship every day. That's not their idea of activity. I think they're going to do a lot of uh, medium-sized ports because the ships aren't six thousand people large. Because they're in the 2,000 ranges, they're going to hit port cities and port areas a little quieter, perhaps. Um, they'll probably want to do a lot of eco uh, eco tourism. There might be um, there might be uh, islands where they'll go uh, scuba uh, diving or snorkeling. A lot of that. There might be um, uh, treks into the rainforests in some of the Central America areas. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. I, I really do. It's it's going to be different than the cookie cutter cruise formula that everyone else, not everyone else, but a lot of the cruise lines are using. Of course, we we love the cookie cutter formula. I mean, there's a reason 27 million people are cruising. We love to eat too much. We like to drink too much, and we like to rest too much and gain too much weight. That's what we love to do. But if you're after that 20 to 35, 45 year old crowd uh, as a as a big contingent of your your passengers and then you're going to have the 50 60 70 year olds kind of added in there you're going to want to offer something for everyone and um, unlike say viking which will have which does have cruise ships right now with 965 passengers no one under 18 allowed and a very calm serene and quiet atmosphere throughout the whole ship i think no, Virgin is going to be far more active. Now, I won't call them a booze cruise operator. I don't think that's what they're after either. Uh, they're, I don't think they're looking to to make it so that you want to have that you have a hangover every day. I think they want to have a scenario where you're exhausted at the end of the day, and the next you're going to get a good night's sleep, and the next day we're going to have more fun and more activities on shore and bicycle rentals. Uh, Zipline adventures, uh, obstacle rope course adventures here and there, uh, just all kinds of activity type uh, uh, destinations uh, and tours and that kind of thing. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. It won't be cheap. Uh, they're not going to be the cheapest cruise either. Uh, they're they're looking to go four and a half five star, uh, so they want to be kind of up there, and you'll pay for the experience. But I think you're going to get an experience. So uh, I'm very open minded about this cruise line. Um, I think they've ordered three ships if I've got my bearings straight. And I think they're talking seven to eight hundred million per ship approximately. So about a two billion dollar investment. The first ship is being built as we speak. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see when it comes out. We're gonna hear nothing but more advanced press, more PR uh for the next year, a year and a half before that first ship even launches. So there's gonna be a lot of press about this cruise line and their affairs activities. And we'll learn a lot more going forward. So, yeah, I'm kind of curious about uh, what Virgin will end up uh, doing. Uh, Sylvia, a friend booked his travel to Jamaica last year and is trying to get travel insurance through his insurance. But they told him uh, he booked too early and they only book a year in advance. What does he do? Isn't that, isn't that something? Um, I guess, I suppose you wait. Um, the, you know, 
I was just talking to uh, Jen about this earlier today. I was talking about uh, Jamaica, that the island of Jamaica, the country of Jamaica has been on um, state of emergency for, I think, five or six years. Is still, uh, I think there's still curfews in place in the evenings because the government just cannot guarantee the safety of its citizens and any visitors to Jamaica after a certain time of the day. Because in the evenings, it's too unruly and the police cannot protect you. Um, and so getting travel insurance to Jamaica might be a bit of an issue. And the reason the insurance company is saying we, we can't give you insurance until at least a year, you know, within a year is because you want to keep an eye on things uh, in the meantime. If, if Jamaica becomes very unstable, they may pull all insurance and not offer any, or the insurance they offer will be so expensive that you may reconsider the trip or not get it. I, I don't know. So, uh, Sylvia, that's my guess as to what's happening and why this is happening. And um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say the only advice I can give this individual is just wait, uh, wait for your, wait for the, uh, you know, and try to get travel insurance uh, closer into the trip and see what what it's about. That's all I know. Paul Wilgus, uh, the renderings I have seen for the new Virgin ships look very huge, uh, like oversized yachts, very modern looking. Yes, Paul, I agree. You know, I, these artist renderings are always, you know, they're perfect. <laughs> then you see the actual thing. Um, I saw a rendering, a computer rendering of the uh, two-story room that Royal Caribbean has on the Symphony of the Seas. That's that family suite that has that tubular slide from the second floor coming down to the living room. And the imagery of that room makes it look just massive. But in real life... <laughs> What I found was uh, I saw a picture of that room uh, from someone with a with a handheld video camera. It might have been a cell phone. And uh, the kid coming down the slide, uh, the slide is three inches away from the glass window, the, the ceiling to floor glass window that that suite has. The slide comes right up to it. And <laughs> so it's a tight fit. Uh, they put that slide in and then they installed the window later, I think, <laughs> to get that thing in there. Uh, so when you see the real deal, you realize, well, okay, it, it kind of looks like the our, our rendition, but the rendition sure made it look luxurious and open spaced and so on. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting, Paul, when that ship you know comes out. Uh, we'll see what it really does look like on board. Um, but there's a lot of unique features to it that I'm sure will appeal to a certain demographic. Scott Batchy, hi everybody. Cloudy today in Ventura. Nice shirt, Bruce. Thanks, Scott. What do you say? Hey, hey. Um, and Sea Keeper, I, I like quiet areas in the shade. I uh, get a mild buzz going, but I'm not a fan of hangovers. I got one once, a heavy duty hangover. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> once is enough. I hear you there. Um, on the t-shirts, by the way, uh, just, just quickly mentioned that I did mention on the video, this one here is designed for a dark colored background shirt, this logo, but this logo is available for white shirts or a very light colored shirts where the TWB would be in black instead of in white. And so I've done that with a lumber of my logos. If you go to the red bubble store, you'll see that. So just look around and see what you think. You may find that you like a, uh, the blue shirt with the black lettering TWB versus the white lettering. Pick the one you want. It's up to you. I make it as easy as possible and enjoy. Um, and thanks again for your support of my channel. Richard C., our February Princess Cruise canceled at Jamaica stop for security reasons last year. Yes, uh, this is not that uncommon. Um, and I give I give Jamaica kudos. They're they're attempting as best they can to to uh, stabilize things. Um, they are investing heavily in port facilities for cruise ships. They are investing in security, uh, brand new brand new docks, new piers, uh, security staff, um, amenities, uh, tourism um, safety. Um, because their, their strategy is simple. If they can get more cruise lines to make more stops in Jamaica and passengers come off the ships and do a tour and enjoy themselves, they're dropping cash there, tons of it. And you're employing Jamaicans. You're employing Jamaicans at the pier, at the dock, uh, for, for the Coast Guard, for uh, 
you name it. And now for the tourist side of things, for the restaurants, the uh, transportation, cab drivers, bus drivers, and tour operators, you're, you're, you're creating a, an industry. And uh, in Jamaica's case, if they can get more people working rather than criming, <laughs> uh, that works out because people who have steady jobs know they have steady, steady paychecks. They can make plans like buying some furniture, uh, having a second child, um, buying new whatever, uh, getting a new TV, new clothing, get a new car, wh whatever it is. And uh, uh, the country is trying to economically improve itself and building enhanced port facilities for cruise ships is a pretty smart move to make because it is a, a fairly clean business when you compare it to say, uh, oh, I don't know, um, creating uh, factories to make, uh, you know, something that belches pollutants out of a smokestack. I mean, you know, if you can employ thousands and thousands of Jamaicans in the tourism sector, that's just a positive thing. If you can calm the country down and get people employed, more resorts will be built in Jamaica, including the all-inclusives. And that would be good for Jamaica and for tourists because there are a ton of folks down there who are ready to help us enjoy ourselves. It's a beautiful place, but unfortunately, the population is such that there are a high number of Jamaicans in dire straits. And that is a country halfway to the third world and the Western world. And the country government leadership is trying their darndest to get that country out of the third world area and more into the Western side of things, if, if possible. Dominica is doing it. Um, uh, St. Croix has done it. Uh, of course, there's St. Thomas, there's St. Martin, there's, uh, you know, all the other islands in the Caribbean that have desperately shifted, you know, quickly shifted as hard as they can to servicing tourists because tourists leave behind cash and they don't leave behind, uh, um, you know, a lot of toxic chemicals uh, uh, from a paint mixture or anything else. I mean, it's it's a clean business, comparatively speaking. Uh, and so uh, Jamaica's trying to, trying to get there. Anyway, cancellations, though, do happen. To Steamy Bean, the shirt looks great. Love the colors. Thanks, Steamer. I hope you checked out that video I made today. Uh, Ulini, uh, uh, Ulani uh, is here. I would say the insurance thing is because you can get a full refund still up to a certain time frame before the cruise. Good point on that too. Uh, you know, I can imagine that you bought insurance and then all of a sudden there's race riots or something like that. Well, you want to cancel your trip. You want to cancel everything and you cancel insurance and you walk away unscathed. Uh, I hear you there, Ulani. Uh, also, I would think also with the insurance side, if you're buying travel insurance, and your cruise is canceled six months before it even happens. The insurance company is kept paying out all these dollars on a cruise that you know, wasn't going to happen. Uh, they don't want to get caught with that either. They only want to pay out when it's an emergency cancellation, like a bad weather or something mechanical or whatever. But yeah, there's all kinds of reasons here. Uh, but good point there. Steam and Bean, greetings, everyone. Uh, Steamer, welcome. Sylvia, he is flying over and staying on a resort. Uh, Sylvie, he's flying, he's flying into Jamaica, staying on a resort, trying to get insurance. See, there you go. Richard C. Steaming late to the party today. Actually, I think Steamer kind of arrives at this time. Uh, school just got out. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> maybe I should introduce my class. Introduce us to your crazy five, uh, fifth graders, uh, the folks that drive you to drink. <laughs> uh, hey, let's get those kids to buy some of these T-shirts, and then all day long you'll be looking at these logos staring back at you in the classroom. That'll drive you batty. I think so. It'll drive you nuts. Uh, Mr. X, I laugh out loud, Steeman, you finish and get ready to head off. <laughs> I'm ready to head off. Fantastic. All right, well, my story today, my news today that, that I had kind of amassed here was I put together some info about hurricane season. Um, I thought I would update everybody, uh, whoever's watching live and whoever follows my channel uh, later on tonight, tomorrow, next week. Uh, the islands and the areas of the Caribbean that were hit, heavily hit, uh, I thought I'd update everybody on how they're doing, uh, what's going on, um, how they've recovered, how they're not recovering. Um, the the, uh, the uh, season starts on June the 1st. That's in the next uh, week or so. Hurricane season officially begins until the end of November. Um, last year, September, October were just terrible months uh, for the uh, Caribbean. And uh, here are some islands and, and how they're doing. Um, 
Anguilla, Anguilla, uh, still not back to 100%, uh, looking to receive passengers in December of this year. They are not able to receive cruise ships even now, May, six months later, they still can't receive passengers. It's December, and that is assuming they don't hit get hit again this uh, fall. If they don't get hit, they'll continue to recover and rebuild and will be able to to accept passengers in December. Barbuda. Barbuda had 1,800 people living on the island. Uh, 95% of the structures were heavily damaged or completely destroyed. The government, uh, basically uh, the government of Antigua, Barbuda, they took all 1,800 folks off the island. They could not guarantee their safety, could not give them the basics of life, water, electricity, food source, and security. Could not offer it. They had to evacuate all 1,800 folks off the island and then start to rebuild the island in sections. And it would be government buildings first, infrastructure, and so on, all at the same time, and then private housing. Um, the 1,800 folks uh, are off. Uh, they were off since November of last year. Uh, they've all been housed in Antigua, uh, except for those, of course, who are now in work gangs working on the island, uh, probably being housed by contractors uh, in temporary housing. And um, uh, they're, uh, they're looking to get all 1,800 back. The earliest that they're expecting any cruises back to Barbuda is this November. So at least another five, six months before the first tourists will show up by then a, a huge number of the 1800 will be back so it's a, an entire year for some folks not on their home island before they can return to their island it's uh, it's devastating i am certain that the insurance claims are a nightmare uh, i'm sure there are disputes between insurance companies and uh, property owners resorts are getting rebuilt from scratch um it's a major undertaking it is a mess and it it takes time it just does uh, you can't drive to Houston and get get lumber and bring it back. You got to ship it all in or fly it in, and that's big money, and that's uh, that's the issue, of course, and labor to build it. Cuba, they suffered flooding uh, in November, coastal cities, including some in Havana. That all uh, was looked after within the first two weeks. Uh, they, uh, they had that licked fast. Uh, it's back to normal since December. Cuba has been back to normal since December 2017. And they're expanding their cruise itineraries. We keep talking about it here. We hear about it. Carnival, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, they're all increasing their calls to the island, as are other lines, and uh, they'll continue to do so. So Cuba's open for business. Uh, but then again, Cuba is sus susceptible to hurricanes, uh, like any Caribbean area, nation. And so um, we have to watch it. But in the case of Cuba, the size of the island and the number of folks who live there, they do have the manpower and resources to rebuild relatively fast and to get back up and running. So um, that's one thing Cuba does seem to have going for it. Uh, we'll see how it goes this year. Dominica. Dominica was heavily damaged last November. Um, they will receive uh, carnival ships starting this July. They'll be finally receiving carnival ships in July. Uh, Celebrity Hall in America, Princess Royal Caribbean, Seabourn have all indicated that through the summer into the fall, they will be returning to Dominica as before. So it's coming back almost a year for Dominica. Florida Keys, they were heavily damaged, as we know. Um, a number of homes were totally destroyed. Condo complexes, resorts, total terrible damage in the Keys. Uh, the Keys, as far as cruising is concerned, the port facilities up and running. Uh, they're back uh, as usual. They expect a regular Winter season this winter, uh, all is going to be back to normal for the cruising end of it. For property owners, uh, it's a one-off situation. Depends on you know whether it was a home that was damaged, a condo complex, a resort, business that you know some folks have started, some haven't even begun, some have given up, others have already rebuilt. Uh, so the keys are a, a mixed bag. Uh, Puerto Rico, lots of news on Puerto Rico, as I've shared with you on, on numerous occasions. Uh, suffice to say, uh, the power grid is the big uh, mystery. Uh, it's the one that was in the worst shape. Before the hurricanes uh, came, the uh, the Puerto Rican power grid was on uh, duct tape, being held together in patches, and was very unreliable. All hospitals, government buildings, almost any resort of renown 
most private condo complexes, especially high rise buildings, they all have their own generator system because they can't count on their own national power grid for reliable power. The entire system was devastated and destroyed uh, to a great extent. It took months to get even 25% of the island back up into a power position other than those folks running generators. And of course, right after the hurricanes, they were running out of diesel to power the generators. It was it's just terrible. But a lot of Puerto Rico uh, has quite a number of spots in Puerto Rico have gone solar. Uh, they've decided to take the opportunity of a rebuild to install solar systems and get off the darn grid and not even bother with it, if at all possible, or really reduce the reliance on the grid. And uh, we've heard uh, stories from time to time where people who are working on these power lines and power towers and whatever, and they have accidents, people getting killed, trying to repair this system. Uh, and then uh, the, 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 the power company gets to the point where they're about to announce 95% is back, we're up and running. And then the day after they have a, an accident or a power surge and the entire grid is off again and it takes a week or two to slowly but surely get each section back up online again. And so they're still struggling to this day, Puerto Rico is, uh, with their power system. Now, the island, as far as infrastructure goes, roadways have been generally repaired, but there are still sections in the interior that are a mess. Uh, the dam that we were watching, that huge water dam that, that was in trouble, I don't know what the status of that is. Uh, I'm sure it's being you know worked on. Uh, I know they had the... Uh, the Marine Corps of Engineers looking at it, uh, uh, trying to figure out the extent of the damage. I could go on and on about Puerto Rico for hours. Suffice to say, on the cruising end of things, they're up and running. The port has been running since last December. Cruise ships are coming in and coming out of there. Uh, but we had heard for a few months after the hurricane the nightmare stories of passengers not able to get in to get onto their cruise in time and not able to get out uh, with their flights because of cancellations and uh, all kinds of issues. Uh, the air airport was also being held together by duct tape. It just goes on and on and on. Uh, hopefully they won't get hit this year and they can keep rebuilding all this winter and keep servicing people and bring in some cash flow because God knows they need it. Uh, so Puerto Rico is quite a story. St. Bart's, uh, St. Bart's got nailed badly. That's the island that uh, Richard Branson was on. He is in his own estate, and he rode out uh, the hurricanes on his own property. Uh, he had to basically rebuild a big chunk of his own property. The island got devastated. Government buildings badly hit. Um, but uh, so far, uh, only small cruise lines have returned to St. Bart's, mainly the uh, boutique cruise lines, those six-star lines, which are like the giant yachts uh, that hold 200, 400 people at a time. Um, the large cruise ships have not returned to St. Bart's. They're not ready. Uh, they're still rebuilding. It's going to be a while yet. St. John's, which is a U.S. Virgin Island territory, this is an island that you can get to from, I believe, St. Thomas by, via a ferry or St. Martin via ferry. Uh, they are will not be up and running uh, fully until March 2019. They're, uh, they're not able to take day visitors even to this day. Um, they have a national park there, and um, they're just not ready. They're still rebuilding a lot of infrastructure damage. St. Martin and St. Martin, um, both halves of the island, badly hit. Uh, the Dutch half, the uh, French half, uh, badly damaged, but they were able to get cruise ships back on the island in uh, January or so. Uh, within a month or two, they they opened their ports again. Uh, they put in millions, uh, millions and thousands of workers to get their island up and running for cruise ships. Um, uh, we've had a number of folks on this channel tell us that they went to St. Martin and they would tell us that uh, the port's fine, uh, but uh, walking from the port to the beach downtown, they would still see destruction or a uh, block behind the main beach where the secondary uh, houses are, apartment buildings, uh, where the work, where the, where the locals live full time, devastation uh, months after, still tons of devastation. A lot of rebuilding had to go on, and it's still happening to this day. So St. Martin has recovered a lot, but not yet fully recovered because of the 
absolute devastation that they suffered. Same with St. Thomas, uh, the U.S. territory. The island of St. Thomas was also heavily damaged, but uh, the ports are up and running again. They uh, tried to, as quickly as possible, get the cruise ships back. They got the uh, the cable car ride running again uh, so the folks can go up the cable car. Um, and uh, like I say, they want the business back uh, badly. They need it. And uh, a lot of dough went in there, but there is still a lot of private uh, damage to be uh, repaired, uh, to be completed, and a number of resorts are still not open. It'll take months yet. It might take another six, eight months uh, for a number of resorts to be back online. Uh, that's St. Thomas. A Tortola, Tortola uh, was damaged uh, last November, but they're uh, they're back on again. They're up and running. And uh, Turks and Caicos, uh, they were damaged, but they too are back up and running as well. They they were able to repair quickly and get back up and running. Uh, these are only the uh, the islands and areas of the Caribbean that had significant damage that I mentioned. Any island or territory I didn't manage, I didn't mention, they're probably okay. I know Saint Croix. I didn't mention it specifically, but Saint Croix had significant damage, but they got uh, a lot of repairs done rather quickly, um, and are you know kind of back up and running. So there's a a brief recap there of the uh, of the hurricane damage and what's been going on. Uh, Let's see what's going on. Thomas Henry's wondering, what time zone are you in, Henry, uh, Steamer? Um, uh, Thomas uh, Henry, uh, uh, everyone's saying goodbye to Mr. X in Tokyo. It's got to go. Steamer, uh, laugh a lot. One of my kids the other day asked me if the cruise ship Escape was going to pick pick me up here in Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan, on the Churchill uh, River. You know, that's a big river out there. Why don't you just ship come down through the north and then come and pick you up and turn around and take you on your holiday? That'd be a pretty, pretty dang nice cruise. Rather convenient, wouldn't you say? Uh, man, that'd be something, Steamer. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. X, I have another 15 minutes for us to sign off. Fantastic. Thomas Henry, steaming could introduce a cruise. <laughs> Carillium, I can't even pronounce that. Uh, cruising's holidays. I'm thinking about going to Port Villa next year in June. Would you know if the weather would be okay? Port, Port Villa. Going to Port Villa. Where is Port Villa? Please tell me. Cruising holidays. Where, where are you? Uh, welcome to the show. I see a little picture there, your little, little uh, avatar. looks like Sydney's Opera House, if I can see that. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, nice to have you here. Steaming Bean, we just uh, survived a fire. Thank God. Absolutely. Thomas Henry, that would uh, make a true uh, steamed bean. <laughs> I guess. Well, like that, Steaming Bean, not a natural fire. The three planes and a couple of helicopters uh, had to fight that. Um, the Steaming Bean, but it's out. Thank goodness. Loves to travel. My computer just shuts down. Then I got to start all over again. That is frustrating. Uh, not good. Thomas Henry must have been the cat walking over the buttons there. They remember. Uh, they remember your pussycats. Debbie Manuel, happy to hear. Safe from the fire bean. Um, Raymond's here. Hi, how? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, how's everyone doing? Okay here. Thanks, Raymond, for coming back. Uh, nice to see you again. Loves to travel. No cat. She's not even in the room, so it's not the cat. Stephen Bean, who has given Bruce a Fonzie today? Who's given Bruce a thumbs up uh, is the question. How many have we got? Uh, how are we doing for thumbs ups today? I got 26 thumbs ups. Uh, not so bad. Thank you, everybody. Anybody can spare a thumbs ups today. Please shoot them over. That would be terrific. Um, uh, Iskew uh, is saying, hi, Bruce. It's Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's 17 Celsius and sunny. Cool breeze, but nice here today. How's everyone doing? Tracy Dunlap, can't believe hurricane season starts again in a few days. And even here in Naples, so many blue tarps still on the roofs, still working on repairs to our house too. Absolutely. These take time. Demon Bleem, plus, plus 26 Celsius in Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan. That's getting nice and hot. Loves to travel. I still I still can't decide where and when to go on my cruise. Rayvon, how you been? We're doing great, Rayvon. We're just talking about the hurricane season that starts next week talking about cruises out there, all kinds of news. Uh, Steam and Bean loves to travel. When are you uh, looking like, uh, wh when are you looking like summer maybe? Uh, loves to travel. I don't know. I usually go around October, can't decide. Steam and Bean, lucky to go when cruising is cheap. The Steam and Bean, have you ever considered the summer to cruise? She says, I usually go around October 13 because that's my birthday. Loves to travel. Last June, I took the Norway cruise. Steamer, I am Bermuda bound on the escape July 15th. Uh, Rayvon saying hi. Thomas Henry. Um, St. Thomas, I was there over Thanksgiving last year. Didn't even get to see the destruction. I did a swimming and snorkeling tour. The beaches were good. Right on. Uh, so that was thanks. That was November. Uh, very good to avoid that downtown area. Loves to travel. I would love to do the Norway cruise again. And Thomas, uh, hi, Rayvon. Where is home for you? He's in the UK. And uh, Thomas Henry, cheers, uh, Rayvon. Uh, Jim Thomas, bin, bean fire didn't burn your biscuits, I hope. 
<laughs> biscuits are fine. The biscuits are good. All sheltered all as well. Well, not too bad. Not too bad there. Um, yeah, you know, uh, you've got to decide where to go on a cruise. Do you go on an October cruise? Do you do a November cruise? If you're going to take a cruise in November, uh, Caribbean, all these cruise ships are coming back on a repositioning cruise from Europe back to North America. Uh, and those first uh, months, the November's, uh, most of December, good chunk of January, the Caribbean is is priced right. And this year we can add the Symphony of the Seas, more accommodation, more more uh, more space. Uh, we can add the Bliss. We can add Carnival Horizon. These are cruise ships that are going to be added to the Caribbean, uh, which means that you know thousands of rooms available on a weekly basis additionally to the season. Even if they take a, a, a 2,000 passenger ship and move it elsewhere, but they're bringing in a 4,000 passenger ship, you're adding 2,000 rooms to the Caribbean. Uh, you multiply this out over a number of cruise lines, and uh, the competition will be uh, hot and heavy to get you to commit. Uh, studio vlog channel, Port Vila, is in Vanuatu. Ah, studio. Um, you know, studio Port uh, channel, I cannot give you a personal opinion on uh, Port Vila because I haven't been there. Um, if anyone out there has, by all means, let us know. I would recommend a studio vlog if you're not uh, familiar with it yourself. You may want to just check our old YouTube channel here and see if you can find some videos on Port Vila in Vanuatu and find out if other cruisers have been there and when. And that'll give you a handle on what kind of weather to expect, what the amenities are like, what the port is like. A lot of folks will post their own video. I would love to have posted one for you, but I haven't been there, so I can't uh, can't help you there. Uh, but that's my uh, that's my. Uh, uh, you know, that's my uh, thought right there. The steam and bean. I was cool to, it was cool to watch another channel live yesterday and Bruce, uh, pops up among the viewers. <laughs> You're talking about, uh, La Lida Loca. Yeah, I was, uh, I popped in there to say hi to those guys. They've been here from time to time. They watch me, but then they sometimes, they don't tell me they're watching. They just kind of watch and keep an eye on me. And if you're watching, guys, how are you? It's great to have you back. Thomas Henry, I have never heard of Vanuatu. Where is it? Vanuatu is in the Pacific uh, between Australia and Fiji, uh, New Caledonia area. And um, it's a beautiful area, gorgeous. And um, a lot of a lot of tourists from the Australia area, New Zealand, they will, will head up there for a bit of a tropical holiday during their winter time. Absolutely. Uh, Richard C., also in the winter, you have all the cruises from the West Coast to Hawaii and check the lava flow. They have great prices for a 15 day cruise, must do trip. I uh, love to travel. When I go on a cruise, I say to myself, how can all these people afford to come on the cruise? Laugh out loud. Yeah, you know, you, you, we forget uh, 350 million Americans, 35 million Canadians, um, 300 million people from Europe. Uh, there's a billion right there, almost a billion, although not quite, maybe 7, 800 million. Um, and there's there's room for how many folks a week on these cruises? 50, 60,000 a week, 70,000 a week, whatever the number is. Um, yeah, it's it. The numbers are stunning. They're absolutely stunning. Um, cruising holidays. Port Vila is in Vanuatu, and I'm thinking about flying there this time. Right on. Yeah, I would uh, cruising holidays. I would uh, check out YouTube videos. I, I would do a search on YouTube. Just you know, Port Vila, Vanuatu, and see what pops up. I think you'll find all kinds of videos about that area, and uh, that might give you a bunch of in, you know intelligentsia you want to help you out figure out what's going on. Um, uh, Thomas Henry, uh, L to L loves to travel. I wonder how much they spent in the casino to get comped cruises. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. How much they, how much they lost in the casino to get comped cruises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get, um, I get brochures all the time from Princess. Uh, they would love to have me come back to their casino because uh, I like to play the slots from time to time. And uh, but I only get uh, room credits. You know, two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, that kind of thing. Um, and it's on a deal that they're offering me. I can get a vacations to go deal that's so much cheaper. Forget the comps, you guys. I'll just go when I want to go. Your comps are worthless to me. Uh, they're, <laughs> you know, unless you give me a free cruise, they're not offering me a free cruise. Uh, Richard, see if you look at a cruise vacation, uh, it is reasonable for one hundred, two hundred dollars per person per day, including food. It is a reasonable vacation. Uh, Richard, see, I couldn't agree more. I totally get you with that. If you got five star accommodation. Uh, you know, on, on a Holland America ship, a celebrity ship, uh, 
you're in one of the brand new ha Royal Caribbean vessels, uh, one of the giant uh, 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 Norwegian cruises, the new Horizon for uh, Carnival. You know, if you can be in a balcony room for a hundred bucks a night uh, or less uh, for a seven-day cruise, uh, man, per person, even with tips and port charges, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can't get that kind of a deal at a beachfront resort anywhere in the United States. Uh, you're not going to get that in the Cayman Islands. You're not going to get that in Nassau, Bahamas. You're talking two, three hundred a night for the room plus the local taxes. Then you got to eat. You might get breakfast thrown in, but not the rest of it. What about renting a car? You got to, you know, you want to get around uh, Miami or, or Orlando or, or Tampa, and Orlando isn't even beachfront. Um, you know, you want to be on the on the on the ocean ocean front. Something you're going to pay dearly, serious money. West Coast. San Diego beachfront, Los Angeles, in between the two, up to uh, up to um, uh, oh my goodness, just north of uh, Los Angeles, uh, you know Oxnard and north of Oxnard. You want to go up a beachfront? Oh, you're talking four hundred a night, it's serious money. Plus, plus you got to eat whatever. You're talking five, six hundred a night. A cruise is such a bargain uh, compared to this, such a deal, and the service and the shows. And the uh, the views, uh, different. You know, they're taking you around. They're moving you three thousand miles, fifteen hundred miles, whatever the mileage is over a week. Fantastic, absolutely wonderful bargain. I love it. I love to travel. I never spend money in casinos, even when I went to Las Vegas. The misdirect. Well, I'm off to uh, Proctor midterms. Have a good rest of your day, everyone. Thanks for popping by out of Tokyo. Have a great uh, day today, uh, and thanks for seeing us. Uh, always loved having you come by. I love your comments very much. Thomas Henry, make sure there's no cheating tonight on uh, Trivia. We're on at 8 o'clock tonight. That's in uh, two hours, less than two hours. We're back on. Stephen Bean, Bruce, are you booked? Uh, no, I'm not booked yet. Uh, we're getting closer and closer. We're not booked yet. I'm still looking. Uh, I got some more of these to get. I got this channel to keep building up, and I got to keep working the, uh, the magic here uh, one by one. But I will be on a cruise, uh, and then I'm looking in the new year for several I'll keep you guys posted as soon as I know. You'll know if you can pop in and say hi to me. Great. If not, maybe the next one. Maybe the next one. But there will be meet and greets for sure. Anyway, I think I'm going to pack this show up right now. I want to thank everybody for the thumbs ups today. Uh, we're now at 32 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. If anyone can spare a thumbs up, that would be terrific before you go. Eight o'clock, two hours. I'm on with trivia tonight. No cheating. Uh, don't be Googling on me. And we'll have some fun. Um, <laughs> Stephen B and TWB, the white beast. Jim Thomas, we'll see you all in round two. Uh, thanks for your support of my channel through Super Chats and through PayPal. Thanks, you guys, for all that, as always. And thank you for uh, picking up items from my store. The Patreon, uh, you patrons out there, thank you as well. I'm still unmonetized with YouTube, waiting to come back on. Who knows when that's going to happen? Uh, Peter Heckema is just right in here. We just had friends from Montreal. They wanted to rent a condo for three months, January, February, March. It's in Florida. The cheapest they could find was 16000 bucks for three months. Yeah. You want to go on a cruise? I think so. Uh, Debbie Manuel, so sad. We'll be missing trivia tonight, but we'll be thinking of how much fun everyone will have. Oh, wait. Tokyo, she's saying. Tokyo is an answer. Uh, Thomas Henry, bye, everybody. Steam and Bean, I will get ready for trivia. Steam and Bean, adios. Uh, blowing kisses. <laughs> Thanks, Steamer. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks, uh, Peter. Uh, that's a great comment, Peter. I know when I lived in Bomb Desert, People would want to come down for the winter for January, February, March, and April. It's four thousand a month minimum for a condo on a monthly basis, and they want sixteen grand, and they'd want ten upfront minimum, and the other six with like two months to go. Otherwise, get out uh, because they could get it. They, they just get it. It's unbelievable. It's a, like it's a hundred a night, a hundred twenty a night. Plus, you got to feed yourself. You need a car. Oh, expensive cruising. Can you imagine doing a back to back to back to back? You could do like, you know, do two, two or three months of cruising out of the Caribbean, out of uh, Florida for the entire winter, all of January, February, March. You'll get great deals in January, a couple of deals in Feb, maybe not so many in, J in March, but it all averages out. And I don't think you'd be spending that kind of money. I, I just don't think so. And, uh, well, better have double XL shirts if you're uh, getting on a cruise for three or four months straight. You got to watch your wa waistline, but I think it'll all even sell out in the end. We shall see. Uh, thank you, everybody. Come on, uh, come on, guys. Thumbs up for Bruce uh, Steamer saying. Uh, okay, trivia in two hours. Um, and I think that's it. I, I'm going to say my goodbyes right now and get a little bit of rest, get a little nibble in. 
and get ready for my show tonight. Thank you for watching this show today. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce, May the 24th, 2018, the day Bruce's shirts arrive, saying thanks for watching me today. See you tonight at 8 o'clock for trivia, and uh, we'll catch you later. Okay, see you guys. Bye for now.